Welcome back to another video in the Blender Modifiers series. Uh, today we're going to be looking at the Bevel Modifier and it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so go ahead, click on your object and click on the bevel. And you can see as soon as we do, you can see some nice uh, chamfered edges on this keeper. Now taking a look at the Modifier tab here, we've got vertices and edges selected. Uh, vertices, you can see when we select it, it's just taking these corners here. And if we increase the amount, you can see it's just chopping off these corners. And we'll go to edges and it will select the whole edge. So let's decrease the offset here. You can see underneath that we have a segment modifier. Increase that will increase the roundness uh, by smoothing it out by adding more segments, segments in it. And vice versa, if we go to uh, vertices here and increase the segments, you can see the effect we get there almost like a dice shape. Uh, but let's go back to edges. So you can see the width type here is currently set to offset. We have different settings. There is offset, width, and depth, and percent, and finally absolute. And all these settings are is different ways of showing you the width percent if you're on percent. If you want it on percent or offset, it will show you in meters, but it does the exact same thing. It's just the amount of offset between one point and the next. Uh, let's keep it back to offset for now. And underneath that we have our limits method, currently default set to angle. And we also have none, weight, and vertex group. So for the uh, limit weight, what that means is when you apply a bevel normally uh, through the modifier tabs, it bevels all the edges all at once. So without using the modifier tab, you can actually select an object, go into the edit mode, and using control B, you can actually bevel that way. Uh, the only difference is when you use control B is that it's a destructive method of beveling. So the bevel modifier allows you to modify through steps and if you'd like to turn it off or make changes, you can. Uh, but once the shortcut bevel has been made, that's it, it's, it's beveled. You can't change it after the fact, it becomes part of the mesh. Uh, so if we select the face at the top and we want to bevel that, we can use control B. Uh, but again, it's, it's a destructive way of modeling. That bevel is now inset to the mesh and we can't make any changes after the fact as well as it not being a modifier. So we can't edit properties that way. So instead what you can do is tab into edit mode, press two on the numpad to go to face select, right click and select edge bevel weight. Bring that out a little and then in the modifiers tab, go to your limit method and instead of angle, select weight. Now you can increase the amount and it's only going to affect that one side, that one selection. And again, you can change segments and do everything else, but you're just making those adjustments on the one section rather than the whole object. And that also goes the same for the other limit method, which is vertex group. Now you can also do it after the fact if you want to select limit method angle, it's not going to do anything until you tab into edit mode, press two on the numpad, go into edit mode and go to edge select, right clicking and adding a bevel weight to whatever edge you want to add it to. Uh, let's go to profile and you can see we've got a uh, super ellipse and custom. So custom will allow you to, by using uh, this sort of curve here, almost like a tone curve if you've done like photo editing, you can see the bevel shape that we are creating here. You can see you can get real funky shapes if you wanted to. And this is a pretty unique way to create different types of bevels. Maybe you want to um, create a wooden table where the edges have these really ornate bevels. Um, you can do that quite easily with this a custom bevel tool here. Uh, but let's just change that back to super ellipse and you can see the shape currently is set to 50 uh, which is about 50 percent of the ellipse and so this is a hard line method of doing what we just did with custom where it will take that straight line and curve it inwards and outwards by putting a value under 50 which will curve it inwards and over 50 which is curving it outwards so next is the mitre options underneath the geometry tab we have the mitre outer and mitre inner both currently set to sharp I'm just going to demonstrate here on the cube what the mitre settings do to your beveling. So if we change mitre outer to patch, you can see what it's doing on this corner here. 
When it's set to sharp, and there's more than one segment, two for example, the way the beveling is meeting together is going to produce a sharp result at the end here. When we set this to patch, you can see it's almost creating these squares. And then when we set this to arc, you can see this is curving the edge here. So if we increase the segments, say it's four, you can see the arc miter outer setting is giving us a nice curve. Patch, again, it's going to be a bit squared. And sharp is going to come down to a point. Now let's look at the mitre inner, currently set to sharp. We change that to arc. You can see it's on the inside here. It's going to arc it rather than come down to a straight point to meet the end. And if we change the outer to arc as well, you can see what that's changing here. So it's going to arc the inside curves. If we change that back to sharp, you can see it's just a straight line to a curve. So depending on what you're making, what the project is, and how you want it to look, will depend on how you want the mitre outer and inner to look. Now the more segments you have, the um, more drastic it will it will look. For instance, if we up it to 10 segments, change the mitre outer to sharp, you can see it is still sharp, but it's not as drastic as it was for just two segments. And again, if we right click and shade smooth, we're going to see how that affects the final result. Arc is the smoothest looking out of all of them, but you can see how that affects the geometry as well, especially for the mitre inner. So that's for the mitre outer and inner. Next is the intersections. And you see when we change that to cutoff, where it is intersecting in this part here, it's almost doing a cutout rather than smoothing over. So let's change the intersection back to grid fill and let's take a look at the spread. Now if we increase the spread, you can see it makes this section here, which is joining, much larger than it was previously. Now if we change the outer to arc, you can see what that's doing. The smaller the spread, the smaller this uh, convergence is, larger the spread, the wider it goes. And to point out, the spread only affects inner arc, not inner sharp. So next let's talk about the clamp overlap setting. Now by default, clamp overlap and underneath that loop slide are already selected and on by default. With clamp overlap on, if we increase the amount of bevel, we can go beyond what it's doing. At some point, the ratio becomes too high. So the amount can only reach, for this instance, one meter. Beyond one meter, it won't change. It will just become this, um, almost like a plumb bob, like a, like a diamond. If we decrease that and turn off clamp overlap and then increase our amount beyond one meter, you can see what's happening. Our o we are now overlapping because nothing is being clamped. You can see the more we increase it, the larger the object will become because it just keeps beveling and beveling and beveling and beveling, going through itself, overlapping geometry. Now just a quick example of why you would want to use clamp overlap, which is on by default. I've just gone in with the knife tool and just made a X here. And with clamp overlap turned off, when we increase the amount, you can see even though our total geometry is not intersecting with each other on any other sides, this side, because it has uh, these knife cuts in it is creating some weird issues, meaning we can't bevel this small total because of these edges here. So if we turn on clamp overlap, we'll never see that issue, but we can't increase our total beveling beyond this point, because beyond this point will, uh, will show issues. Now let's talk about the uh, loop slide option underneath clamp overlap. Again, by default, it's turned on. Now you really won't see much of a difference depending on how complex your mesh is in this view but if we go into wireframe view you can see i've made two knife cuts in an x pattern here and if we turn loop slide off you can see how it's affecting those edges those lines depending on what you're making and depending on how complex it is and depending on what sort of outcome you want you might need to turn loop slide off or keep it on to have the geometry of the object that you that you wish. Again, this this goes also down to this is also down to the texturing and UV unwrapping and whatever else you want to do with your project. Turn keeping this on or turning it off will depend on, on your needs. But this is the simplest uh, explanation I can come up with. It will conform the edges of your mesh to the bevel if it's off. 
and leaving it on will keep how they were originally. And finally on the last tab we have shading. Now this will be to do with how light and textures react to the beveling. Especially if we have really funky settings like a custom custom bevel, sometimes the shading might act funky. Uh, so in that instance, if it is, we have a few settings here. Hard and normals. When we select that, we also get this warning to enable auto smooth and object data properties, which we can do. If we go to object data properties down here, normals, and we can auto smooth it there. And you can see that's the hardening of the normals and auto smooth applied. And we also have to mark a seam. Marking a seam would be to, if you wanted to unfold a UV map to texture it and mark sharp as well. And material index, depending on how many materials you want to put on. And finally, face strength. And that's all the options within the bevel tool here. The bevel tool is one of the most useful tools within the Blender Modifier tab. It allows you to have these really nice curves and smooth corners, but it also allows you to experiment and change a few things up, like getting this, um, this really interesting shape or having a custom bevel, something that just looks really, really strange and bizarre, but might be very, very useful for whatever you're modeling. So that's it for the bevel modifier. Let me know in the comments down below what you'd like to see in the next video and we'll take a look at it and explain it in detail for you. So thank you very much for watching this episode. If you liked the video, give it a like. If you found this video useful and you are not yet subscribed, please do so so you can always be up to date on when I upload more videos. And thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.